Mobile application development is becoming more and more accessible for everyone. And if you've ever thought about making an app, it's unlikely that you've not thought about your budget. The question I want to answer is, what is the bare minimum that you must spend to make an app? So by the end of this video, I'm going to give you a concrete figure as to what is, in my view, the absolute rock bottom minimum that you need to spend to build an application. And I'm going to arrive at this figure by showing you various strategies that I use, including the use of free tiers and free resources to keep your budget tight. But let's take a step back first. First, I want to jump into any random app cost calculator just to give you an idea of what to expect. So let's say we just need mobile and you'll definitely want to have visitors. It's pretty reasonable to need administrators as well. This is just an MVP, so we'll try and keep it simple, but we'll definitely want something like messaging. We'll want to be able to upload media. We'll need a dashboard. Let's leave it at that. Uh, we don't need AI, Internet of Things, any of these things. So that's fine. And we'll submit that. OK, wow. On average, we're paying 27 grand for this. And that price is in euros, so it'll be something like $30,000 for this application. 30 grand for a super basic bottom tier app. Now, I have clients who are like hobbyists and indie startup founders, even doctors, who have an app idea that could be really great for their industry. But they do not have 30 grand to throw at an agency in the hope that the agency will understand their vision. Which brings me to agencies. First, I want to be really clear, there are some amazing agencies out there who do amazing work for their clients. And there are also agencies out there who will happily charge you $200 an hour so that they can hire a junior dev, maybe on the other side of the world, to hack together your app with no understanding of context or vision. And they'll pay that dev the bare minimum that they can. Earlier in my career, I once worked for an agency for $30 an hour. The agency that I worked for was great, but their client happened to be an agency. And I had good reason to believe that the agency who was the client of my client was actually passing my work through another agency before reaching the actual client. My God, the code that I inherited was so bad that I spent countless hours trying to salvage it. All costs that would have been passed up the chain with everyone taking their cut, and the end client will have been paying, I don't know, maybe 50 grand for a website. So what a mess the whole outsourcing industry has become. The problem is telling good agencies from bad ones. I mean, you could literally go on YouTube and you could search how to build a software dev agency with no experience. And you'll get tons of guides which basically explain this principle of how you can concentrate everything on marketing. And then you can just go on Upwork or Fiverr and hire a dev to do the actual fulfillment for you. I mean, what could go wrong? Ah, but then again, wait, if you go straight to Fiverr or Upwork yourself, you get pretty damn favorable number of choices. One of these people must be amazing, right? And it's only $200. What could go wrong? Do you know what qualifications you actually need to be a mobile app developer on Fiverr? I mean, you need to have the tech skills to be able to create a Fiverr account and to use ChatGTP to create a profile for you. Now, look, don't get me wrong. There are some amazing devs on Fiverr and Upwork. Finding them is what's hard. There are just too many stories of people being burned due to inexperienced developers and shoddy work. I mean, with the time that you would need to invest to truly get a really good developer on Fiverr or Upwork, feels like you could just learn to code in that time. So yeah, I mean, just learn to code. How hard could it be? <laughs> okay, budget assessment so far. An agency could be about 30 grand, odds of it being a waste of money, pretty fair. Freelancer on Fiverr, $300 plus, odds of it being a waste of money, yeah, pretty high. At this point, we can talk about no code and AI tooling, but there is a paradigm shift coming up at this point, and that is the involvement of your own time into the equation. First things first, no AI will not write your mobile application for you. Funnily enough, a lot of people who are truly committed to using AI to write their mobile app for them actually end up spending so much time to get things working that they kind of learn to code accidentally. But this is all totally anecdotal because AI coding is just so young and the hype has not balanced out yet. If you do want to learn to code, definitely use AI. It's better than any course. But understand that for an application with any level of complexity, it will take a very long time to do this. And I want to point out something really important at this point. There almost seems to be people out there who don't understand that their own time is worth money. 
Let's say that you're a teacher by profession and you have a really cool idea for an e-learning app, for example. So you fire up, say, Cursor or Winsor, one of the AI code editors, and you watch a few YouTube videos and you start cracking into iOS development. You could take some time off of your full-time job. Let's say that you're on your summer break as a teacher. I think you could reasonably have AI teach you enough coding to make a basic application in, say, about three months. Probably for an e-learning app, it might be something closer to six months. So that's 40 hours a week for 12 weeks. And let's say you make about $24 on average an hour. You just spent $11,520 on your app. And from a best practices and a scalability point of view, your app mm, definitely sucks and it probably will need to be rewritten at some point. Okay, let's call it 10 grand, maybe 20 grand if you went at it for six months for a more complex app. Next, we have no code and low code tools. Flutterflow is my domain. This channel is all about Flutterflow developments. I use Flutterflow because I think it's a great tool and it saves a lot of time. It also introduces headaches of its own and it does have kind of a steep learning curve. But my opinion is that Flutterflow will get you over the line much faster than using the pure AI approach because Flutterflow apps have established architecture and step-by-step -step guides for setting up things like push notifications or app store deployments or payment processor integrations. Flutterflow will cost you about $70 a month, plus your own time in getting through Flutterflow's learning curve. That learning curve is going to be less significant than if you were just using AI tooling, but it's still a significant time investment. Okay, so far I've talked about the fundamental cost, which is getting the app coded up and functional, but there are other costs associated with creating a mobile application. Your users will probably judge you harshly if your design is bad, because cheap designs make an app look cheap. A really good yet basic design can ballpark cost you about five grand, so we're already in trouble. Design is not something that you can fob off, and for me it's actually my biggest hurdle when I want to create an app as cheaply as I can, because I have all the natural design talent of a stapler. I'm waiting for an AI tool that can genuinely create a good looking app. And I'm still waiting. There are tools like Use Galileo, Magic Patterns, UIZerd, but my experience so far with these tools has been underwhelming. However, UI UX design is not necessarily something that you can't try yourself. So if you make an app with a bad design, it's still an app. Figma has a free tier and then University of YouTube. If you have the time, and you don't have the money. Also, I can recommend Mobbin and also Dribble to get inspiration, and as a first pass, that can be enough. It's worth acknowledging that under the hood, regardless of what direction you go down, you will probably be making use of open source software, and the open source communities are the vibrant and solid foundation of all of software engineering. And tools like Flutter and React Native, they're open source. So is Visual Studio Code, so are server-side languages and frameworks like those for Python or PHP, so is Git, so is Postgres, so is Docker. These are all super important and very free technologies. And the number of them out there is staggering. That can actually be a disadvantage in a way because it takes a lot of time to pick the right technologies, let alone learn them. But still, I think it's really amazing that these things are and always have been free. When I give you my grand total of the minimum budget that you can get away with for an app development, this is not going to be inclusive of scaling costs. Having three users in your application is not the same thing as having a million users, and hopefully that's obvious to you. Cloud providers vary in price. The dominant market players are Google Cloud Platform, uh, Microsoft Azure, and Amazon Web Services. The more server load that you need and the more services that you use from these providers, the more the cost is obviously going to go up. But I will leave this very complex topic for another video. What I will say is that all of these providers actually have free tiers to one extent or another. And if you want to create an MVP that has very low usage and a very low user count, well, I mean, I currently have two apps that I maintain and I do so long term and they cost me zero dollars a month. You actually need a website to launch a mobile app, which has always seemed really weird to me. At minimum, you have to host forms for data deletion. You also need to host privacy policies and support URLs. And a landing page in most cases is also quite essential. For landing pages, you can use WordPress, Framer, Wix, Squarespace. <laughs> Card, Weebly, Shopify, or Webflow.
but they cost an average of $20 a month. Instead, I actually recommend something like Vercel V0. With V0, you can use the AI to whip up a basic static site and you can tweak the design as well as you're able, and then you deploy it to Vercel for free. And because it's static, it's free forever. I've literally never paid to host a static website. That would kind of make me feel dirty. And then there's the domain, and you do need to buy a domain. I mean, when I see a business that avoids buying their own domain, I find it hard to take that business seriously. One domain will give you unlimited subdomains as well. So there's actually so much that you can do with one, and it's worth the $10 or less a year for the more basic domains. And this video is about literally the bare minimum, and I still recommend buying a domain. I recommend the domain registrar Cloudflare because they actually sell domains at cost price. A lot of people don't seem to be aware of this one, and I see freelancers and businesses all the time using a Gmail address for their business. Did you know that once you've got your domain, you can actually use redirects to get a free business email? This is the second key reason why I started using Cloudflare, as well as their cost price domains. Because if you have your domain with them, you can actually set up an email redirect server, and you can set up as many business emails as you want. So you can have like info at your domain, support at your domain, and it's all just free, and they all just redirect to your Gmail or whatever provider you have. Then you need outgoing email, and for this I use Resend. Resend have a free tier of about 100 emails a day, which is plenty for th doing things like password resets in your app, app onboarding emails, and even limited amount of marketing emails. The other cool thing is that you can use those 100 emails a day to send your manually written emails via your domain. So recipients will receive your emails that you wrote in Gmail from your business address totally for free. Marketing is hard, and it's harder without a budget, sure, but you know what? Organic content marketing is free, and it's a great long-term strategy for marketing. And it's totally possible to do it all for free, but again, it's gonna cost you time. Okay, so thanks for sticking with me this far in the video. Now I'll tell you what the minimum price that you can get away with for a mobile application is, but you need to bear in mind that this price assumes that you have a lot of time to spare. So the underlying open source software is of course free. You might use ChatGTP or some other AI and get away with a free tier easily enough. Your Cloudflare domain, that'll cost you whatever the value of the domain is, but you could get away with less than $10 a year. Then cloud services with their free tiers, you can get away with totally free as well. And then the website, you can use V0, that's gonna be free. If you DIY your UI UX, you can also do that for free. The Apple App Store fee, you cannot get away with for free. You need to pay the $99 to get your app in the app stores. And the same goes for the Google Play Store, but that fee is less, it's about $25. Then, as I say, if you use Cloudflare for your incoming business email, you can get away with having it for free. Resend has a free tier for sending emails. And then quality control is really important. There are whole departments in bigger companies for quality control, but you're going to have to do the testing yourself. So bear that in mind, but you can DIY that for free. And then DIY, use organic marketing, use social media marketing, and you can also do that for free. Just bear in mind that a really crucial choice will be learning to code yourself using no code, using an agency, or using a freelancer. And whichever path you go down will make a huge difference in terms of the price that you pay. And finally, you have scaling up. And scaling up is going to cost you money. If you have a million users, your application is not gonna be for free. Your servers are gonna cost you money. So I can tell you genuinely that I have personally paid about $134 a year or about $11 a month to build mobile applications. Of course, I can also use those App Store accounts for any other apps thereafter. So that kind of dilutes how much it costs me. And I could even use subdomains of the Apex domain for separate projects if I really wanted to for landing pages and that kind of thing. But I have been a software engineer for many years, so I know a lot of this stuff already. If you have to figure all of this stuff out by yourself and you plan to spend the bare minimum in terms of dollars, it's really important that you ask yourself honestly, what is my time as the application owner worth in dollars? And if you're thinking about Flutterflow or maybe how to leverage AI in your app development projects, try out this video next. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.